Psalms 22 and 18. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture, right? So they take his garment. His garment was so beautiful. It was woven from the, the neck down without a seam in it. That's why I said they, he said they part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. Meaning they beat it for his garment. It was a bad garment. So he wasn't walking around tacky. Looking all tacky. No. Matthew 27, 35. Matthew 27, 35. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots. Meaning they bidden for his garment. They bid it for his garment. They crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet David. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. See? Just showing you how it's being fulfilled. You know, my shot, y'all was shot. Mark 15, 24. Mark 15, 24. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them, what every man should take. See, that was a bad garment, I'm telling you. Luke 23. Luke 23. And... Luke 23 and Then said Amasha Kelbashai, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He said, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots, bid it for his garment. See? Just as it's prophesied, this is what they would do. St. John 19, 19th chapter, in the 24th verse. Look at verse 23. Then the soldiers, the Roman soldiers, when they had crucified Amashak Gavashai, <coughs> took his garments and made four parts. To every soldier a part. And also his coat. Now the coat was without seam. There it is. Now the coat was without seam. Woven from the top throughout. This coat was without seams. It was the coat was from the top all the way down to the bottom without a seam. Woven from the top to the bottom. Decked out. Now the coat was without seam. Without a seam in it. Woven from the top throughout. Then said therefore among themselves. They said therefore among themselves. Let us not rend it. But cast lots for it. That you know it was worth something. It was sharp. He said let's, let's don't tear it. And he put it in the four corners of the. Each. Each. Um, Soldier had a part of it. They said, don't tear it. But let's cast lots for it. Let's bid for it. Whose it shall be. Whose it shall be. That the scripture might be fulfilled, which says, they parted my raiment among them 
and for my vessel they did cast lots. These things therefore the soldiers did. Let's see. Hebrews 2, the second chapter, in the 12th verse. Hebrews 2 and 12. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, and the children which the Most High have given me. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. Flesh and blood came just like everybody else. That through death he might destroy him that had power of death. That is the devil. Through death he destroyed the devil. And delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. You know? All our lifetime subject to bondage under who? Under the Romans. First under the Greeks, then the Romans. In other captivities, many other captivities. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, since people want to say that Gabriel impregnated Mary. He didn't take on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed, which is a compilation of sperm of Abraham. Hmm. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him and seed is compilation of sperm. From Abraham to Isaac Jacob, all the way to King David, tribe of Judah, all the way to Amashiach Yavashiach, or the tribe of Judah, or the seed of Abraham, or the seed of David. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to the Most High, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. We know the sins of the people from reading Acts 5 and 31 a few times in this lesson. It said, repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Those people, the Israelites. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to secure them that are tempted. He's able to secure we that are being tempted. That's why I said when you come to serve the Most High in Ecclesiastes 2 and 1, prepare yourself for temptation. That's why these, my second child said, hey, give it to me. He already conquered the devil, right? Remember it said, uh, verse 14, that through death he might destroy him that had power of death. That is the devil, you see? Got power over him. So he can protect us from the devil if we lock into him. If not, then you got to deal with it on your own. And he's going about to and fro up and down on the earth to see who he can destroy Psalm 31 and 5. We got to know them. Psalms 31 and 5. Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O most high power of truth. Power of the, his laws, that's commandments. Right? So, look at uh, Luke 23 and 46. Luke 23 and 46. Remember, he said. He gave them understanding once they seen him written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms. That's why we're here. Luke 23, 46. And when Amashek Hosha had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the spirit, gave up the ghost, which is spirit. Same thing we're reading about. It's being fulfilled. 
Psalm 34 and 20. Psalm 34 and 20. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Most High deliver him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. See, he keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken, right? That's why I say you get to understand to the precepts. Now, they didn't break David's bones. David died of old age with a young girl by him. Keep him warm. But he'd have, he'd have intercourse with her, though, but they just brought her there to keep him warm. Um... He died of old age. Natural. John the 19th chapter. Uh, let's start at verse 31. John 19 and 31. It's very important that we know him. If you don't know him, then what you think going to happen? You think you're going to be all right in not knowing him? But recognize that's why it's important to know him through the volume of the book. John 19 and 31. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was in high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away, right? Two male factors that was on one side of my second side and one was on the other side, right? So let their, their bodies be broken so that they'll die. They could take them off the tree. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other, which was crucified with him. Broke both their legs, both men. But when, he, when they came to Mashiach Yavashai and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. So they seen he was already dead. They didn't break his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bear a record and his record is true. And he knoweth that he said, what he says is true, that ye might believe. For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled, a bone of him shall not be broken. You see? So, we're seeing that these prophecies that's written, but we got to need to go back there. And what he said in Luke 24, 44. Luke 24, 44. And he said unto them, said to the apostles, these are the words which I spake unto you, this Luke 24, 44, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, that's the first five books of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms, what we're going over, concerning me. You see? Concerning him. These things were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets concerning the Mashiach Yahweh Shai. As joined. That's very, very important that we see this. That's how we know him. We're looking at him. We're seeing how it's being um, fulfilled. In him. As it's being prophesied of him. And we're going to from the old to the new. To see that's being prophesied. And seeing that it, what's been prophesied is being fulfilled. Psalms 34. Let's see now. Um, Psalms 35 and 19. Psalm 35. And 19. Let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. Hmm. 
right? Let's look at uh St. John 15 and 25. But this coming to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in the law. They hasted, they hated me without a cause. See? They hated him without a cause. See? Psalm 69 and 4. Psalm 69 and 4. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. They that would destroy me, being my enemies wrongfully, are mighty. Then I restored that which I took not away. From there, look at uh, St. John 15, 25 again. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. See, they didn't have no reason to hate them, but they hated them. Isaiah 25 and 8. Going into the prophets, Isaiah. Just showing you that what he said is real. And once you see him in the volume of the book, then hopefully he might open up your eyes that you might understand the scriptures. Isaiah 25 and 8. He will swallow up death in victory. And the Most High will wipe away tears from off all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. For the Most High has spoken it. Right? For the Most High has spoken it. From there, look at... Um, Let's see. Um, let's go to first, uh, first Corinthians, back to the fifteenth chapter, and first Corinthians fifteen, and we're gonna jump up to verse uh, fifty-four. So when this corruptible, which is these bodies, the more the bodies that we in. When it's corruptible, shall have put on incorruption, meaning a body that's going to last forever and eternally. And it's mortal, shall have put on immortality, eternal life. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. See? So that's the reason why I said that, because look at... Um, See where I want um, Second Corinthians five and one. See these bodies that we have are a temporary rental body that the most I gave us, but he got another body for us. Listen, Second Corinthians five and one. For we know that if our earthly house, which is our bodies that we in now, of this tabernacle were dissolved. And we know the bodies go back down, this flesh go back to the, the dirt where it came from, back to the earth. We're dissolved. We have a building of the Most High. We have a body that's of the Most High. In house or body not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. That's what it's talking about. What we just read. Mortal putting on immortality. For in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house or our body which is from heaven if so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked being clothed 
We should not be found naked, being ashamed in sin, doing the things that's wrong. If so be being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. Not for that we would be unclothed or exposed to our sins, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. This mortal body might be swallowed up of eternal life or the body that he have for us that's going to last forever and ever and ever. Now he that has wrought us for the self-same thing is the most high, who also have given unto us the earnest of the spirit, his spirit. So I say he dwelling in us. They shall, he say, they shall, they shall make their abode in us. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that once we are at home in the body, we are absent from the most high. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and that's real. Because this faith that we have has to be abundantly strong in the most high, or you could be found in your, like you said, naked, ashamed in your sins. Where he's laboring to make us perfect. And don't make his labor in vain. It says. We are confident I say. Verse 8. And willing rather to be absent from the body. And to be present with the most high. Absent from the body. Not dealing with your lust. And the things that you would deal with. That will keep you from the most high. Wherefore we labor. That whether present or absent. We may be accepted of him. Whether present or absent, we may be accepted. How do you think you're going to be accepted by him? Because he brought all judgment. That's what it's going to tell you next. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of a Mashiach. That everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. So we want the good to outweigh the bad, y'all. If you've done things that's bad and evil and wrong and wicked, you got to do more good. You got to do something that's good. And doing what he say do. Change. They can say, well done, sir. He, look, he brought us all from. He ain't bring nobody from no, no holy than thou. The people don't come into this truth. We all got background. We all got some kind of things that we've been dealing with. To be able to understand. That's why a lot of people can't get it because they holy than thou. He ain't calling them. He calling us as wretched and done, done things that are against the law. That's what we call into this. For the people that's mainly thinking they holding it now, they ain't keeping no laws of the most high. They ain't going, they ain't coming to learn this here. They already think they got it in their religion that they learned from slavery. Hmm. We must all appear before the judgment seat of a Mashiach that was shot. That everyone may receive the things done in this body. According to that he have done, whether it be good or bad, knowing therefore the terror of a Mashiach Yahushua, hmm. we were swayed men, but we are not met, we are made manifest to the Most High, and I trust also that self faith also are made manifest in your conscience the way you think, the way your mind is operating. You better be thinking, like you say, the terror of a Mashiach Yahushua, like you said, though, but those mine enemies that would not allow us to reign on You can't say you want him to reign over you if you're not doing what he said, do what he said in St. John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. You're doing whatever you want to do. Nah. You're rolling with the devil and not the most high of Mashiach Yahushua. You create evil, therefore you bring evil to you. Point blank. Revelation 20 and 14. Revelation 20, 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. 21 and 4. And the most I shall wipe away all tears from your eyes. No more tears. No more crying. No more tear ducts. The most I shall wipe away all tears from your eyes. From their eyes. These are the people that make it to the kingdom. 
One third of the twelve tribes of Israel and a remnant of all nations. But this is to the Israelites. And the Most High shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. Ooh, hallelujah. For the former things are passed away. Ooh. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new, even us. Most I will. And he said unto me, Write, for these things are true and faithful. Isaiah 50th chapter and the 6th verse. Isaiah 50 and 6. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Hear that? Once again. Remember, he, he showed them where he's in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms. Isaiah 50 and 6. He said, I gave my back to the smitters so I said, look at that movie, Passion. The Passion is about the closest thing you're going to see to what happened to him. My shake of a shot. Mel Gibson said, Gibson said, if he'd have told the truth, they'd probably kill him. I gave my back to the smitters and my cheeks to them that plucked off their hair. They pulled their hair out of his beard. That hurt. You could just do like this, man. And just pulled, you know that hurt. Just pulling, just pull a little bit. But they pulled, they pulled, took turns pulling his hair out of his beard. Beat him in the back. I gave my back to the smithers. They beat him with a uh, a whip. In my cheeks to them that's plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. We done read already how they spit on them. Mm -hmm. So from there, let's look at Matthew 27, 26. Some things might be repeated because it is what it is. Certain things that's written specifically, we go here and we see that it happened. Matthew 27, 26 through 30. They released the, they then released he Barnabas unto them. And when he had scourged Mashiach Yavashai, whipped them. He delivered him to be crucified. Now, when you look at this, let's go up from here because I want to make something perfectly clear. Every year, Pilate would release one of us in prison, right? And the Israelites. Asked for Barabbas, the murderer. <clears throat> Start at verse 17. Let's read verse 15. Now at that feast, the governor was wrought to release unto the people a prisoner, as I said, whom they would. Let a prisoner go, right? And they had then a noble prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Yahweh Shai, which is called Mashiach? You see, that's very important. 
Because Mashiach, there's only one Mashiach. There's only one Christ. There's only one anointed. He was called Mashiach. For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. They envied him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. You hear that? So, Mosiah vest her in a dream. Concerning Mashiach Kabashai. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Mashiach Kabashai, right? The governor answered and said unto them, Whither? Of the twain or two will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Yahweh which is called Mashiach? That's very important. That's why the Spirit brought me the scripture breakdown on Mashiach. They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. Wicked Israelites. Let him be crucified. He didn't do anything. And the governor said, Why? What evil have he done? See, say, what evil have he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. They cried, Let him be crucified. Then Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a turbo was made, it was a roar was, was being made. He took water and washed his hands. Check this out. He took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Listen. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. So that's what you're dealing with all the way to the day. You got those that said, their ancestors said this. Even though they're Israelites now. They said, His blood be on us and on our children. The same spirits that said this is the same children that's on this earth right now that feel the same way. They ain't gonna be without with a Master Kelvin Shot. So you know he said his blood, a Master Kelvin Shot blood be on us, them wicked Israelites that just said crucify him, and on the children of them. So you gotta look at who are, who are, who who are you the children of? The same people that say his blood be on us and on our children. And that bloodline kept going. It ain't stopped. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Joshua shy, he delivered him to be crucified. Scourged, he whipped him. Like I say, he put his, his back to the smithers. But he said what? In verse 24, he took water and washed his hands, Pilate, before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. But when he had him scourged, whipped on his back, like he said, but we just read how he's going, he said he's going to be whipped in his back. And they pulled the hair out of his beard, giving you more of what they did to him, besides putting them thorns on his head and beating them, beating them thorns into his head. Then answered all the people, verse 25, and said, His blood be on us and on our children. So his blood is on them, then, and on his children. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Mashiach, Yahushai whipped him in his back. He delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Mashiach, Yahushai into the common hall and gathered into him the whole band of soldiers, the whole army of soldiers. There's already soldiers that took him. They got all the soldiers together. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had platted a crown of thorns, that's like rosebush thorns they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him saying hell king of the jews and they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head with them crown of thorns on his head they kept beating him they beat him with that crown of thorns on his head Now let's go to Mark 14 and 65. As I told you, Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is telling pretty much the same story. John is real spiritual. 
Mark 14 and 65. And some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to buffet him and to say unto him, prophesy. And the servants did strike him with the palms of their hands. See, servants did strike him with the palms of their, hand, their hands. This is what he went through. Mark 15 and 15. And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barnabas unto them and delivered him to when he had when he had scourged him to be crucified. Hear that? He said, I wash my hands of this just man. Just show you how the wicked are. I wash my hands of this just man, but I had him whipped. When he had whipped him, see? When he had scourged him to be crucified, had him to be crucified. Was that the truth or a lie? Him saying, I'm, I'm innocent of this just man. When he washed his hand of it. When he had him whipped. He whipped him. Hmm. Verse 19. And they smote him on the head with a reed. They smote him on the head with a reed. And did spit upon him. And bow on their knees worshipped him. Mocking him. That's what he went through. It was prophesied he had to go through this. Luke 22. Luke 22. And 63. And the men that held Amashach of Shai 